Right guys, so I felt like I had to make this video after an announcement the club potentially could be finished in 24 hours. So after that statement went live, m fans were messaging me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. So I thought I'd make a video addressing it. Let's begin with why we are Bolton fans. We're asked this all the time and it really goes back to Thog Grandad Barry. Uh, who yeah. was born in the early 40s and since the 1940s he's been going to Bolton Wanderers games and he remembers the days when Burnden Park held 70,000 people. <sighs> yeah, but to this day, aged nearly 78, he still goes to games with the Lancaster Warriors. Amazing, and we were just with him the other day and for someone like him, there was a video of the 78 year old uh, Barry fan who said yeah. he's been going to games since five. That's just like my granddad, your dad. Yeah. It's completely same boat. I was brought up in Lancaster and, and most of the kids in the school playground support Liverpool and Man United. Yeah. But age seven, my dad sort of packed me up and said, right, we're off to Burnham Park today. And I went to my first game in October 75, home to Notts County. We won 2-1. Amazing. We had players like Neil Watmore, Reed, Allardyce, and just fell in love. So I've been going, what's that, 44 years now. Incredible. And once in, never out. And of course, you know, when yeah. you were three or four years old. You took me to a game and I, for some stupid reason, <laughs> I said, I actually like this. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And, you know, ever since then, I've seen some incredible memories at Bolton. Even in my childhood of complete downfall at Bolton Wanderers, yeah. I remember at the peak of when I was like, what, seven or eight years old, I went to Atletico Madrid away. You know, Bolton played Bayern Munich away and we drew 2-2. And we yeah. beat Atletico Madrid when they had Aguero and Diego Forlan mind-boggling stuff right there you know I and even more nearer memories where we secured promotion in from League One football when we played Peterborough at home then there was a mad pitch invasion there was so much passion and love going around the ground and then the year later spending no money surviving on the yeah. last day with Phil Parkinson who yeah. will always be in my heart when I turn up at the Macron it feels like I'm home yeah that's the only way I can describe it it feels like I'm amongst family but I think back to the highs you've talked about the European tour exactly yeah. I think back to the lows. I was at White Hart Lane when Fabrice Moamba, I thought he was dead. I thought I'd seen one of our players die on the pitch. It's, it's in the heart, it's as yeah. simple as that. What is so special about Bolton Wanderers, Dad? I'm going to come up with a Thog Dad fact here. Oh, okay. Because Bolton Wanderers were actually formed in 1874 okay. as Christchurch Football Club. Mm. Yeah? yeah, and there was two founders. One was a vicar and one was a schoolmaster. Do you know what the schoolmaster was called? Was he called Thomas Ogden? Thomas Ogden. Yeah. In 1877, we became Bolt Wanderers Football Club. So we've got the same surname as the person who started Bolt and Wanderers. We have, and I've not done the research. We need to check that out. But, but we were one of the founding members of the Football League. Yeah. Um, do you know how many times we've won the FA Cup? We've won it four times. 1923, 26, 29, and 58. And in 58, it was quite tragic because we beat the, um, the Manchester United team that had been decimated by the Munich air disaster. Here's a Thogdad fact though. Do you know who won the first ever FA Cup final at Wembley? Um, was it Bolton Wanderers? It was Bolton Wanderers. We beat West Ham in 1923. But a more interesting fact, that day, yes, yeah. the official crowd was 127,000. Biggest but the, ever. But the police estimate there was 200,000 people in Wembley that day, which oh makes that gosh. the most watched Football game ever. How how is that for a thug dad first? That is mad. To think that Bolton Wanderers, a football club that had two hundred thousand around Wembley that day, are now going to disappear. I know. This yeah. is a book called Wartime Wanderers. Yeah. The Bolton players were instrumental in the British Forces 11 during the Second World War. Interesting fact there by So, so yeah, a mention of Harry Goslin, who was our captain who tragically died in service in 1943. We are one of the most historic football clubs, not yeah. only in, in England but also in the world. Yeah. What has gone wrong at Bolton Wanderers? We're going to sum it up here, basically. Yeah. I mean, look, you could write a book on this. You could write a, probably a Netflix film on it, really, Dad. Yeah, yeah, and I tell you, if you saw it on Netflix, you wouldn't believe something like this could happen. There was a fan uh, and a businessman called Eddie Davis who bankrolled Bolton Wanderers through the glory years. He pumped in... Loads way, of money, yeah. Way over 100 million. Yeah, and then what happened is, yeah. you've got all these big players on very high wages, like ridiculous wages, because we were fighting for Europa League. Now, shock, what happens? Bolton get relegated by uh, Stoke on the last day, and we end up in the championship. Yeah. And we end up with all these high wages in the championship. Now, Eddie Davis was getting on, he already pumped over 100 million. He didn't have the money to pump any more in. Yeah. So we had these players on high wages, and then December 2015, a winding up petition from HM. RC, 173 million pounds of debt. Yes. So, like, yeah, so that's the situation. So, I mean, respect to Eddie Davis yeah. for, for giving us those glory years. Yeah. But when that ended, we had problems. And it ended too quickly. There was a takeover by a, a former Bolton footballer called Dean Holdsworth. Yeah. 
and a Monaco-based businessman called Ken Anderson. Yeah. They pretty much just got their sums wrong, didn't they? Yes. Also, just not having enough money to pump into the club and save us. I've got a friend who is a co-owner of another of a championship club. It's just an expensive hobby. Yeah. Every year, you know that you're in a multi-million dollar sum that has to be plugged into the club. It's very hard to and, make money in football. And it, Correct. Hard. So we got to a situation whereby in May this year, both Bolton Wanderers Football Club and the hotel, the Bolton Whites Hotel, went into administration. We thought a new consortium called Football Ventures was going to come in in the last few days, but sadly this weekend it's broken down. He released a statement a few hours ago saying there could be a deal that is done before the deadline. However, we don't know yet. It's a lot of work to be done before the deadline. We don't know if we'll be able to get it. Even if we get new owners in, a club like Bolton Wanderers shouldn't have got to this point where we're that near Correct. to extinction. And it's I a joke. Theo, just give it a list of the things that we've had to experience over the last three years. Winding up orders, loads of them. Players not being paid. Yeah. Staff having to go to food banks yeah. because they've not been paid. Bolton v Brentford was cancelled. We had our trains and everything booked. We've had a player, Christian we Deutsch, take Bolton Wanderers to court. Training ground was locked off. Still can't get season tickets for Bolton Wanderers this season. Bolton Wanderers players leaving. Our best players just walking out because they can't be bothered to save us. At, you know, at our lowest point, leaving our academy to players, our senior fixtures for the for this season so far. Most of the Bolton team at the moment is younger than Theo. Literally, yeah. yeah. I'm 18. You got to put yourselves in our boots, right? And think about it. Enjoy the fact that you're financially stable because one day you could be like us. Why does this matter, Dad? Well, as we've already said, Bolton Wanderers is an integral part of the history of British football. Yeah. So if Bolton Wanderers goes out of existence this week then you've, it's almost like you're throwing away a bit of our nation's history. Yeah. There's over 200,000 people living in Bolton, and Bolton Wanderers Football Club is a massive part of the community. It's the heart and soul of Bolton. And imagine, Theo, if you've got kids who are three or four years old. Yeah. And imagine if there was no Bolton Wanderers, and you couldn't take them to a game, and you couldn't introduce them to your mates And you there. couldn't enjoy football in your childhood. Football was my childhood. It was. Why does this matter? Because your team could be next. And here's our message to the EFL. This is the point of the video and this is one we want to get across, as well as many fans of Bolton Wanderers. Message number one for the EFL. I want you to understand that football isn't simply a business. It's not simply about balance sheets and income statements and cash flow statements. It's about people, it's about fans, it's about communities, it's about passion. And I don't think you understand that. Yeah. And I think second of all for me, I think there needs to be a better test of whether owners are proper and fit to run a football club. When Ken Anderson, Dean Holdsworth, took over the club, if there was a test in place, then maybe they wouldn't have been in the position to destroy our football club and where we are today. And to save other football clubs in the future, there needs to be a better test in yeah. place to look after the clubs. Paddy McGuinness, the comedian and massive Bolton fan, he tweeted it himself. He tweeted a very good tweet about this. Third one, EFL monitor your clubs more closely. Yeah. There's 72 clubs in the yeah. EFL, yeah? yeah. Um, make sure they're not overspending yeah. on, on wages and salaries. Make sure that they have the cash on the balance sheet to keep those clubs going. Um, and like Theo says, let's involve the fans. Yeah. You know, let's have fan-owned clubs, and it's happening all over the world. Let's have experiments where fans own and run the clubs. Yeah. Too many times people are allowed to walk into clubs and basically come out just to make a profit. That's their only sole hope. If things start going badly, they walk off and destroy the football club. Why that's allowed is shocking. Yeah. It shouldn't be. And the laws that should be there to prevent bad owners holding fans to ransom. Finally, I think this is a good point. There should be a stability fund where Premier League clubs at difficult positions can help out the lower league clubs. 200k means nothing to a Man City, but yeah. it could save Bolton Wanderers. Yeah. But we're not blaming the Arsenals and the Man Cities for what's happening at the Boltons and the Berries. That's not what we're doing. No. But what we are saying, there's billions of pounds in the game. But not just Bolton going into, I mean, grassroots football, non-league football teams that may need a slight amount of money just to support them. Do your job, yeah? Do your job, because there's tens of thousands of Bolton fans today. Some of them are crying. Yeah. All of them are upset. All of them are, conf are confused because they're thinking that part of our lives, part of our heart, part of our soul might be ripped out in the next 24 hours and you're, sit on your, you're sat on your asses doing nothing. Here's our message to everyone involved around Bolton with this takeover. Get it done! Two months Bolton Wanderers fans have been rumoured hearing it's on the verge of completion.
Yesterday we heard that it's not happening. Today the, we've heard this progress. We've heard it for too long. Get the stuff done and let this football club run like the other 90, apart from Barry, who are now, thank God, have been saved. Our hearts are also with Barry, with Coventry, yeah. and with the other clubs who might very soon be in this situation. Let's hope Coventry move into Coventry again. Let's hope Barry are, you know, I know we, they've been saved, but let's hope they get back up and running like a proper football club. Let's hope Bolton survive. Hashtag pray for Bolton. Thank you very much for watching. I'm just thinking, I just hope Come Saturday, we're in Gillingham to yep. watch Gillingham versus Bolton Wanderers because that's all we want to do on a Saturday. Yeah. Let's be honest, we might get thrashed 6 0 when we play our academy boys. I don't care. We'll be singing, we'll be proud, we'll make the journey to Gillingham to support the boys. Thank you for watching um, and we'll see you all later. Once in, never out.